The COVID-19 pandemic has indeed affected every household and this has trickled down to the purchasing power of people and now they are being cautious on what they shop. For those in the manufacturing sector, the demand has gone so low with consumers now prioritizing essential goods as opposed to selling luxury goods. At the peak of the season like Christmas, products such as Christmas cards and trees would be everywhere on the streets. This time round, a few traders have ventured in them. Traders are being cautious in what they have to trade in. The type of goods which are being imported these days is actually not the goods which would be go, which would be brought or imported during this season. You can't see Christmas cards, you can't see Christmas decorations, you can't see these rakizarias or seasonal products being imported. So people are still importing those basic goods like clothes, like uh, shoes. However, for most of the enterprises that have adopted online platforms to reach out to customers, the investment has been worth it. Or businesses that operate in the ICT space have seen themselves grow in this year because the lockdown measures have meant that businesses and customers are taking the issue of digitalization as a very serious matter. Therefore, all businesses that have invested in designing websites, in designing apps, every business that has been uh, designing tools that can be used to ease the life of the customer during this time of limited travel has seen their profits skyrocket. A lot more Ugandans are starting to embrace e-commerce and what this year and COVID-19 has done is further reinforce the relevance of e-commerce platforms like Jumia in Uganda and in Africa in general because e-commerce has been able to provide consumers platforms where they can access essential goods and services. It also, um, e-commerce also saw an acceleration in, uh, in its adoption by sellers and brands uh, because traders and vendors who had no access uh, to their physical shops or market stalls uh, due, to the, due to the lockdown needed an outlet and a platform to be able to sell and continue to make revenue from home. However, sectors that face challenges are the education and tourism sector. For as long as social distancing remains in force, these sectors will continue to dwindle and the only hope now is towards having a vaccine which government promised will be ready by March 2021. The education sector has really, really, really struggled. As we speak right now, most schools are still closed. So this lagging behind will continue into 2021. Even when the schools are reopened, hopefully in January or February of 2021, the, um, the tourism sector is also struggling. It's true that the airport has now been reopened. It's true that the vaccine has been found, but this will take a while. And this will negatively impact on our tourism sector going forward. It's apparent that for reaping from the altered consumer behavior using online-based approaches has proven good, but not quite in the same way for those procuring products from abroad for sale. And, uh, so they are buying through third parties and the e-commerce has not been fully embraced because again of the risks which are embedded with e-commerce, especially if you are dealing with a supplier who can at any time give you something which you don't which will not sell at this, this side of the country. Doing business online has been great for business to consumer, but in the trading space, it has not been as effective for business to business. So with the elections, the lag effect of the double-edged scenario will see the worst coming to pass in 2021. Join it and Babazi, NTV.